because we don't want to keep you long, we yeah, thank you for coming. Uh, this is a very mini workshop set up by Miss Casey. Thank you. And we're going to talk about this, 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 and this. So GPA, most of you know GPA, grade point average, uh, starts accumulating at ninth grade, and it's good for scholarships and good for highly rated schools. I don't think too many colleges look at GPA much. The ACT is mainly what Ms. Liz is going to talk about. It's the standardized test. We recommend your students start taking a ninth grade and at least once every year. It measures their ability to handle the first year of college. Only. That's Only. It. That's it. And colleges will use that as a means of if, we, if you're high score, they like it. They give you higher scholarships based on the score. Uh, if you're low, they may not give you a scholarship and they may require your students to take some remedial math or English if you're too low. And that won't count towards college. So you really should take it at a community college, but should talk about that later. So SAT is similar to ACT, but it's usually everywhere but the South. But almost every university in the country will take both but they prefer one over the other. So if your student went to Michigan, they may say, we want the SAT. And you say, well, we've already taken the ACT, but there's a comparison chart. I think it's the second page in the packet. Uh, and to my knowledge, every college will accommodate that. STEM is a scoring number started two years ago in the ACT, and it measures calculus, chemistry, physics, biology, the, the sciences and the technology part. And that's a number that they say if your student is ready for those technical fields, the first year of college. Now us doing hands-on STEM for a long time, we know your student may could be high in that area, but if they haven't had a lot of hands-on, they still might have trouble with labs but at least it's an academic measure uh, that they're ready. So if they want to go into biology, but that score is really low, then they probably should do a year at community college or take more here at high school. Uh, and, and you need to start looking at that early. Um, and then the NCRC, the National Career Readiness Test, that's fairly new. Yeah. Given by ACT. Given by ACT, but recently, nationwide recognized by industry. For instance, Nissan will not hire anybody that hasn't passed the second level. So it's bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. And it's a measure of how, basically how good an employer you're gonna be. I mean, it's that basic. So it's a little bit academic, a little bit uh, situational. You know, like if the car has a flat tire, what would you do? go home and not call anybody, call your boss, say you'd be late. Uh, and depending on how you answer it, that's, you know, it measures what kind of employee would be. Uh, Nissan has given us a lot of feedback that uh, a lot of employees are not, are not ready to work. I mean, it's simple. <laughs> it measured by they don't come in on time, they fall asleep on the job, they don't want to be retrained. So this test will uh, measure that. So, Ms. Liz, uh, mainly I think you'll do ACT and the CRC. Right. Right. Okay, so, so the parents can after, after work. Yeah, that's awesome. Right, thank you. Okay, so what is and what is not ACT? We kind of hit at it, right? I'm not going to lower the point. But it's not a measure of intelligence, it's not a measure of uh, you know, IQ points or blah, 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 blah. My ACT score is going to correlate, da, da, da. They might, they might not. Okay. How well will your student do the first year in college? They have psychometrics that they're written by, they spend over a million dollars a year on this test. They look at how the first year freshman did in college. They compare it to what the ACT score is. All they're saying is based on what we know from our tests, this is how your student will back up nationwide in their performance. So they're pretty accurate. 
So that's why we have the benchmarks. So I think I've, somewhere around there is a piece of paper that has benchmarkings on it. Um, one of them that I pass out. Mm. No, say, no, no, this one. Yeah, it should say benchmarks on it. Oh. Okay, so nationwide we have these benchmarks. Oh, so one. yeah, I've got to kind of look at them. I'm not sure how many we printed out. We kind of got my teachers kind of took more than they should have. <laughs> so, so the benchmarks are what is the minimum score I need to make on the test so that I can get past the remedials, or my student is check the box so I can take my dual enrollment class. Okay, so typically for a major university, 25 is my magic number in math and science. So if I can do 25 in math, I don't have to take remedial math anything in college. So if I can hit the 25 mark, it's awesome. If not, now this is a major university, this is Ole Miss. This is Mississippi State. They're going to tell you, go back and go hit your remedial algebra because we're not sure that you're going to do well. They want you to perform well because they want their statistics higher on their first year income. So it all helps them. If not, how do I do that? My kids are not ready. And, and, and many of ours that leave here because statistically nationwide, math is low. English now is starting to track low in the United States. It's not fun, but that's just how it is. So when you start having English tracking low, What's going to happen? My math is going down, my English is going down. Well, then, of course, the reading is going to go down, and with reading, the science is going to go down. So, how do we justify? How do we, what do we do? So, we've got junior colleges that can do this. So, this is why I'm telling you that probably the best bang for our buck right now is junior colleges. Junior college, two year junior college, let them go two year junior college, get their feet wet, do whatever. Did you tell my daughter that? Yeah, I, will. I, I mean, I tell them every day. And, I mean, we, we have these conversations. No, I know. There's a stigma. They, they, they have this stigma attached to junior college. But I'm telling you, the best bang for the buck is right now, especially with COVID and all the universities. And I mean, we've got our uh, Skylar is at Ole Miss right now. She's two classes are in person at Ole Miss. She's paying for a full 16 hours at Ole Miss. Two classes are meeting, and she's paying for a dorm room in the rest of virtual. Sit home. Why are you doing that? It's ridiculous. Whereas you can go to a community college, live at home, or you can get a scholarship based on a little bit lower ACT or however you're doing. Community, yeah, or GPA. Um, Lucas, my brother, he just finished with his bachelor's degree in education. Um, he was. Off a roll, but not. Uh, he didn't have a very high GPA, 24, I think. Um, not even in the top five speaking at uh, high school graduation. He went to junior college and he just began to network and get involved in the things that they had there. Um, when he graduated there, he was, uh, what did they call uh, Hall of Fame? Yep. Hall of Fame at Tolan, which opened doors when he did go to a four year. And that's a conversation I've tried to have with seniors. There are so many positives to even start up and just networking, yep. just learning how to work with what's the system. People. Yes. So it, you know, it's not just financial. It's right. Which that is eventually yes, well, that's the financial part too. But it's right. But so our plan is with the kids, and we do, and y'all may hear this, and y'all gonna go, where's the kids? It's crazy. If you go to two years, right? They join Phi Kappa Theta, fraternity, sorority, whatever it is. It is an academic. If you have, what is it, three, five and above, or an A average above, that's a full ride to the next level, okay? Mm -hmm. The next, in the U.S., the next two years of college at a major college are paid for by this organization. So now we've taken a child that may be above average, graduating from a very small pond in Mississippi, and they've outlaid how much cash for school. They start off financially as an adult with how much debt? Now, we put them on a good path, right? Mm -hmm. Next part is getting them a job and, and the whole process she's talking about with networking is teaching them early. Savannah, I'm gonna pick on Savannah. Savannah does this well. 
So then I could go and I could drop her on Mars, and she would have colonized and then been, yes, mayor, been elected mayor within six hours. That's just how I, I do not worry. And I, hate saying I don't worry about your child. She's going to be fine mm -hmm. because she networks, she gets around, she knows how to, you have taught her and have done a very good job of teaching her how to work all the systems and get around. Not as a bad way, in a very, very positive way that I wish all of our children learn how to do. She's gifted with gab in a very positive way. Well, so is AJ, obviously, right? However, Thanks. however, but a good way, but a good way, not a great mama. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. Yeah. Savannah is very hireable. Savannah, you know, comes across as being very, you know, anywhere, anything you need her, she's going to do. So if I could get all my kids to do that and then put in more and more and more to academic, I mean, we got a good package going here. So community college is certainly a way to go with the ACT. Go back to this. You know, there are four parts. Y'all remember taking this thing. It hasn't changed much except for this. If they want to go to a four year, they do something now at certain colleges called super scoring. So, say Shelly goes and takes the, the ACT and she is popping out and reading. So, maybe she did really, really well on her reading and math. So maybe she's got like 27, 32. Dang. But, however, English is not so good and math is not so good. After you've taken one written test now, Shelly can go cherry pick it on the computer and go, I'm not taking anything but English, or I'm not taking anything but math, or I'm just going to take math and English, and that's going to be it. You don't have to sit for the entire score yet. And then they take those scores, if they're really good, they add up, put them all up, and they, take, they cherry pick the best scores over the years that you've taken, put them into one score, and that's called a super score. So that's how you're seeing some of these kids are like, how in the heck do they have a whatever score? Okay, they cherry pick their, their scores. Only certain colleges are going to take the super scores. Ole Miss at this moment does not. Mississippi College does. At one time, Ole Miss did. I mean, so you have to kind of pay attention to what your colleges are doing. And this is why it's important now for you to go and visit colleges. Y'all should be going to visit colleges. Y'all should be already checking that list and getting, getting rocking. Ains, I think, no, does Ains know where she's going? Yeah, she already applied. She's already got, that's what I thought. We'd had yeah. that conversation. Mm -hmm. So she knows where she's going. The main thing is trying to put money in, in, in her wallet before she gets down there. Just go, go online and go find the scholarships that are there, if anything's there, and just kind of see where it is. Well, we'd like to get a scholarship. Oh, there's some things yeah. out there. Yeah, there's craziness out there. Okay. There's so much out there that kids aren't even applying for. Is well, I worry about, like, our income. Like, mm -hmm. do they look at that? On some, some, some they do, some they don't. Some, they don't. Okay. some is community service. That's why. Some is like, you know, whatever. There's a, what, 4 H scholarships out there. There's, I mean, the state farm. The, that, the thing that Liz signed all the kids up for at the beginning of the year, that fast web, mm -hmm. it sends us no less than 10 emails a day telling you what out there that the kids can apply for. Some are community service, some are. Coca-Cola, some are academic, right. some are, are the fields you want to go into. It, some are just people have money and want to give scholarships and you just have to apply and write an essay. Some you don't have to write an essay for. But I'm telling you that website sends you emails every day. And they're national, so you may or may not get them, but it takes like five to ten minutes to fill them out. So. And every school has uh, private alumni scholarships that are unpublished. Yes, so we get to a point where you need 5,000, call the yep. department to go in and yep. say, do you have any part of scholarships? And then they call their alumni. But we're not so privy. Yeah, we're not privy yeah, to it. The recruiters kind of know about it, and they can kind of do some. So it's always good when you're talking to a recruiter from whatever college or junior college or whatever, get to know your recruiter. Your recruiter can make or break you. The recruiter that Josh Leger had to go to Ole Miss was outstanding. Because we kept telling her, I said, it's between LSU and Ole Miss. You've got the shot. He does not want to go to Ole Miss at all. He's an LSU fan, I can tell you right now. However, if you come up and give him a scholarship that he cannot turn down, he is going. And he will be a chemical engineer that graduates from the University of Mississippi. He will represent you well, and I can promise you he will do the best thing that you've ever had. And he is. He's graduating. And he's spring. graduating, and he's made the chancellor's list the entire way through. And he's going to graduate with a 3-8 out of Ole Miss. And I just talked to him over Christmas break. He's down to nine hours. 
he's on easy street, he doesn't know what to do, and now he's papering the world with his resumes. <laughs> he's actually got two or three good leads, he did a good internship, the problem is COVID. Yep. Yeah. Not a good time. Sorry. I got Not a good time. Love it now last week. So yeah. And hopefully. so, and so, he's a phenomenal hire. I would hire him tomorrow. But he did everything. He, he listened, and he did everything we asked him to do. Scholar, Di Benedetto, same same thing. She graduated out of here. Her math was atrocious on the ACT, and she wanted to go to Center for Manufacturing Excellence. We're like, what the hell? It's not going to happen. If there's a tutor down in, in Baton Rouge, if you want to get on to, I didn't have to, it was one call, she's gone. She, it worked out, she went to Mark, he raised her four points in the next test. So it was enough to get her over the hump. Still the CME didn't take her. It was fun for us because I was like, oh God, this is going to be a God thing, help us, you know, let's get through this. Well, what happened was she'd been doing virtual reality with us <laughs> and training with virtual reality while she ends up running. She's now the lab director at University of Mississippi's virtual reality lab for their half million dollar virtual reality lab. And she's teaching graduate students as a freshman whose parents oh, wow. <laughs> never went to college, have never been in the inside of college and have no clue. So there are things out there that we can help and direct the students. You just have to have one parent involvement, which you guys are all here. Two, we gotta have the, the kids buy in, right? The kids are buying into it and they're doing what they need to do. I can tell them all day long, here's the test, here's the ACT test, here's the book. And this is the book that they're looking out of. They've got to take the test. They've got to have the self-discipline to take the test on their own and sit and find the problems. We can take it all day long in the class and I've got 15 kids in that class. I can attend to some of them, but some of them, you know, it, it's, it's the whole class. It's a whole class I'm doing. I'm not doing an individual to I'm not doing, you know, I'm not going down that path. I can't, I don't have the time. So I'm hitting the high points on it, but the kids know what their deficit is. And if they don't want to go to the next level, then they're not going to go to the next level. And that's what I always tell them. They'll come back and go, I made a 15 on this test. I'm going to go take it the next test. I was like, no, you're not. Not until you tell me what have you done differently to make a difference on the test. Or you're just telling me it was a fluke that I made that number and I'm going, no, you've got to put the work in. You're not going to raise your score unless you do more math on the math. You're not going to do better on the English unless you do more English. It's just how it is. ACT is written by the, I mean, these the psychometrics in this and the psychologists behind every Thinking question in there is research to the point at which it's trying to be a deficit for the kids. They're not trying to make it easy. So yes, when your child goes, the reading is so boring. Yes, it is. They make it purposely boring. They are trying. They, they could get everybody they want to if it was wonderful and be all happy and balloons and whatever else. This is about a serious student and how they're going to do seriously in college. It is reading out the chaff, right? It's just taking it out. Who is serious about doing what they need to do? So as parents, always get this. What, what do I need to do? Okay, here's what you need to do. At an early, early, early age, they have to be reading. Reading. And I'm not just talking magazines. I'm talking serious reading. This is written on anywhere from an 8th to a 12th grade level. The vocabulary in it is certainly 11th to 12th grade in the, the uh, reading passages. And if your students aren't reading, I can't help them. Work. And that's sad to say. But I, they're, they're, so their reading pattern, their, their um, word attack is not there because they don't read. So their fluency in reading is not there because they're still tracking and doing whatever. If they read more and read it higher and more sophisticated text, the brain does that for you. It, it weaves it together and it's making the connection so then it gets done. So we jumped, can't say who we jumped, but we just jumped 70 points in reading for one student. Okay. Just simply reading really hard old English text. And we did it for eight months. And it was, I was surprised that's a fluke. It never happens that much. Usually you get two or three. Usually mm -hmm. two or three. Never that much, but we got that much. And that was big. And you know what the student said? Oh my gosh, all I did was read. 
Yeah. And look how much my reading came up. And I wanted to just smack him in the head. I was like, yeah. I'm not saying things because I'm just saying things. I'm just saying things because I'm old and I know these things. So reading, math. Half of that math test is pre-algebra, guys. Mm -hmm. They don't have their basics. They can't go forward. So mm -hmm. they'll trip them up with higher math, but a, a pre-algebra is run in there. So in the geometry, it goes back to the algebra. So it's, it's kind of like, obviously, you've been building in high school on the math. So if they're missing a part of the math, the ACT will bring it out. But can you get the answers to the test? Yeah. December, April, and June, and I believe your October test, you can check a box and get your answers and your test back, and you can see what your kid missed with that. See what your kid missed. Well, I need I need to see it. So I can, did that for the April once you sign up for Okay, for this coming. Okay. Yeah. Let oh, me you check a box. Yeah, yeah. check a box. It's, it's, the actual, mm -hmm. it's the extra fee. It's, it's, all, it's yeah. an extra fee, but I was like, no, I have let's, let's yeah, see it's, it's, on the, it's on the deal. It's like an extra $30 to get it. And they'll give you the test back, and they'll give you what your kid put down it as, as their, their checked off, off answers, and then you can go and see. And then what you can do from there is subscore it to see where exactly they're missing. If it's in English, it could be just the grammar they're missing mm -hmm. and not the rhetorical and not this. If it's in math, I can tell you whether it's, what they're missing, is it geometry or is it trig? So you can really, really, really drill down and that's what you want to do. You don't want to waste your time. You don't want to waste your time. You don't want to have all the headaches associated with making your study for this test. It's not fun. Um, waivers, Y'all know if uh, free and reduced lunch gets uh, free ACT, free college signups, and I put all that information over there on free, uh, right in front of Shelly, where it says waivers. Um, and then the accommodations, I, I pull the accommodations. Where's that one? That's right there, should be stacked up. So if you need accommodations yeah. or free waivers. So that's right there. Free waivers. waivers. Did we pay your last Did you Yeah, now. Yeah. With the accommodations, um, Salty takes care of that as far as submitting the information, but a student who, students who, I cannot, we don't have a special education program at WCCA, but we do have Title I. Now we have students with exceptionality that do come with Title I, because Title I is for failing or at risk for failure. Mm -hmm. But we have students with exceptionality who are on eye roll. They don't come to me, but we have documentation in a of record so I can still, even though it's not a free 504 right. plan and that type of thing, I can still do, I just call it, I turned it uh, accommodation profile, okay. swapped in a healthy thing, she uploaded it for a student last week. And they, and they took it. it? They took it. Because with the last and test Robert took, he, they said I had time. to have a 504 because the neurologist wrote a letter and I'm like, I, I'm all just in the dog, got me everything. Denied, yeah. Right. And then something from, I would think 504 would be much more yeah. than what Ms. Casey did. Right. But there was a checkbox for the limits and an accommodation plan. I'm like, it depends on what we do. And it's like I said, okay. it's bizarre. But so, yes, I, I did do one, or I gave it to Salty. But it cost $600 to make a 504. But I didn't want to see and, that. Yeah. So, I mean, while they're taking them, get them in there. Yeah, I don't mind. Right. Now, those boxes. make sure they're also checking the boxes to have their ACT sent here to WCCA because I've got nothing of late. And usually, Charleston would kind of give me that because what I like to do is obviously I want the stats. I don't care about the student name, I want the stats. I want to see how we're doing. It's a reflection on what I'm teaching and what we're doing. So, if I need to change my game, I need to know that I need to change my game. Or if we're seeing a uh, reading decrease or something, then Casey and I and Ray, we can all have conversations about, okay, change it around, let's change game plan or come in here and, and let's supplement or do something else. So I had a great meeting with our teachers today about doing bell ringers. We're going to change, hopefully they're going to do this, change the bell ringers to a lot of them will be like an ACT question. Now the students are going to hate it. Yeah, I don't care. It's just how it is. Okay. So the more we can get them to think logically and to not do rote memorization and to inference and you know all of the and even at home you know get them to solve problems for you you know oh, we're doing this what do you think you know all this 
And the main number one thing is goals and objectives. Please have them start doing goals and objectives. When I get them, they look at me like it's a deer in the headlight. What do you mean goals and objectives? Do you mean sports? And I'm like, no, not sports. I could care less. Okay, right now I'm talking about you. What are you doing as an individual? Where do you see yourself a year from now? Five years, 10 years. 15 years. Let's make a plan. It's not set in stone. It just gives you a guidance where we think we're headed. Can we take an off turn? Absolutely. Take this ramp and go this way. That's fine. But we need to be pointed in a direction. Because I get fired up about that. If you give me a direction and you want a heading, man, I can help you get there. I will gladly help you get there. I cannot help people get there if I go, I can't help it. I can't, I can't fix that. It's not anything to fix, it's just I can't help direct you. And I want to direct. I like to help you put people in. I can make a phone call to co to the head of uh, the physics department. Ray's got contacts all over. I mean, we can call people. But if I don't have anything to work with, and soon I'm going to be calling Savannah because she'll probably be our representative. And I'm like, Let me show you what. <laughs> <laughs> if she survives the next three years. She'll be fine. <laughs> Promise. Okay, so uh, accommodations, fee waivers y'all have, um, benchmarks, and then um, this is the official guide. This is what they use in class. So this is the brand new, the red book that's out now. I would suggest using ACT official stuff. When you start going off label to Macmillan or whoever else, they're good, but it ain't ACT handing them the information going here. Those are all retired tests in that book. Okay. So it's giving you the bottom basic. Here it is. Also varsity tutors online, uh, ACT prep online. Um, they all are now moving to this online group and it's great. It's quizzes all the time. The kids can sit and do quizzes, 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 and they just move through it very quickly. And then they'll get, if they miss it, they'll give an explanation on why they missed it. What'd you miss? And I like it for math because it lets the students quickly go through the math. And then when they hit where they don't like, and I can always tell, <laughs> word problems, definitely. Then they start, you know, they'll, they'll either shut the computer off or go, oh, yeah, I've done enough. And you're like, <laughs> uh, no, hang on. Where were you? And, you know, quiz them about that. Y'all don't have to be the experts on it. You don't have to know any of it. Just prod them to do it. Getting them to do it is you know, half the, half the battle. Um, trying to think what else is it? Um, math, reading, science. I've already said the science teacher, there's not much science on the science course. It's graphs. It's how do you read a graph? Do you know that the x variable is? Do you know what the y variable is? Can you read the graph? What does this chart mean? And it will give you the most outlandish graphs in there that you've ever seen in your life. They're the stupidest looking things you've ever seen. We don't teach it. It's not in our academic books, these graphs. Okay. So I have to go like off label, like medicine, to go get the graphs and bring them into the classroom to teach it. But if they would get this book and just simply take the science test out of this book, it'll help improve because all it is is graphs. And it's teaching them to read the graphs and read for information and grab the data and go look. We just do not teach it this way. It's our, our science books are not written like these science tests are. And if they're given that book on those, they will know what questions to come back and ask. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I also gave the teachers today, there's 167 words that are included in the ACT vocabulary. So last year, Ainsley and them got tested over that. That was a vocab test that they had in ACT. Um, when they come through ACT with the, they will do the vocab. They'll learn that vocab. But it's really good to have it conversational so they can talk about it and they actually know what to use the word. So, um, reading, vogue, math, fee waivers, accommodations, scholarships, test dates. Test dates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what all classifies as accommodation? Gosh, it's in that packet. I don't, there's so much in there. Certainly, if you have a diagnosis of ADHD. And that's from what the two students, well, it's been two or three over the last five years that I've been 
uh, in the Title I department. So two or three overdose first four years, and then this year already I've had two. And what the first place I look is Title I, who's coming to Title I, because I know I already have an accommodation plan for those students because they were they on that this for failure and I knew um, what they needed to be successful in class. Um, the second place I look is in the team records to see if they do have a diagnosis. Because then, even though they're not Title I, I can just, and that's the big thing, y'all, is be able to justify why I wrote a plan, or why I put the checks in the boxes. So for me, it is a diagnosis or need accommodations in your general ed classes. Um, I don't know what may be all listed there. I think it's, yeah, it's, there's a bunch so of stuff something to look over and, you know. But that's the two things that specifically I'm getting. Now, I would say that um, another thing that would be of help is, is if you could get them to make the goal a number goal on their test. Okay. So, hey, I want another 24. I specifically would like to have English be this, math be this, reading this, and this, and make them go at it. Psychologically, humans do better with a numerical goal, something that is achievable, something that the brain can actually try to physically obtain. Okay, so that's what we work for. We don't do really well. The subset of us out there, there are some of us that do, but typically we don't do well with an open-bordered or open-minded thing. We have to focus it in. But that's why in sports you always have, you find goals and objectives in sports a lot, right? We talked about it a lot. I want to go state. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to bat this. I want to run this time. I want to make this many points. I want to get five charges a game or whatever you want. There's always, there's a number there, right? Well, they know. Sports psychology tells them if you put a number with something, the kids will achieve it. It's the same thing for anything. If we do it in ACT, I promise you they will. Um, they just have to get it in their head. That's what they do. So we'll get them there. Or try to get but this isn't my own factor. No. Correct. No. So, so um, most of, if, if I could get, now for COVID years, you know they waived the ACT, right? So a lot of, a lot of schools aren't taking, COVID, aren't taking ACT. But it helps on the scholarships. So. It helps on the scholarship, mm -hmm. it, but on some of them, see, I think you can have an argument. If they're not taking an ACT, then for the scholarship, why are you, why are you I can't get to it. I can't take the ACT because of COVID, so then, therefore, why am I not a scholarship so you're going to have an argument mm -hmm. on both sides <laughs> so they, they kind of put themselves in a position that is not really tenable for them so i, I don't know um yes it does well if, if, if we can get them to a certain school i mean that's classically what we want now what i'm pushing for it may be too late for seniors and this year but if we could find uh professional development for the students on how to take care of us Mm -hmm. to get rid of the anxiety because that's one of the biggest things and I, we'll I, I feel through. that's what Savannah's about oh, yeah and they, they all have this premium, oh I'm this and I'm this and I'm going to go take this test and then they're like and then they second guess themselves like crazy you're oh my gosh well half the in any standardized test half the battle is knowing how to take the test right I mean I try to tell my mother the what problem I'm is the, the greatest part the greatest thing about WCCA and private schools is we do not standardize tests to kids to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is a great thing that I do not share with my public school colleagues. And I love that. Because I'm not worried about teach it to the test, teach it to the test. What do you teach? So I don't know. I talked to the test. I have no idea. Whatever's on the test. So you know, great memorization or trying to do it. They can take standardized tests really well, but the knowledge, then you start looking back and forth. We don't. So that's a deficit for us. However, there are ways and skills to get around that. And there are people that you can hire and come in for like a weekend or nine weekends or a four hour course for the kids and they will teach them how to go at it and attack that and by the time they're through the anxiety kind of leaves them and if they'll just kind of keep doing what they what people tell them to do the anxiety goes away and they just come up with okay I'm mm -hmm. I get it I get it it's not a big deal but yeah that's, that's the biggest problem I see when we, we go through and we'll score these ACT tests Probably should the scores are higher. If, if and I did this one day, I'm like, 
If you think you're going to change it, do not change it. I'll yeah. cut your hands off. Don't change leave it. it. Don't and let's it. score it with you just leaving it. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not unless you can prove to yourself that it's absolutely 100% wrong. Yeah. Change. And then move on. Don't think while I'm in the math test, oh my gosh, in the reading test, I should have wrote. No, it's done. It's done. But please do not feed them a very huge breakfast. 20 minutes before they go in to the test. Okay, let them eat like an hour before because where science tells you, <laughs> where's it going? If you got the big limits, then everything's going down here. So you're not getting all the, you know, what you need to really think correctly. Let them eat a good breakfast, then let them take a snack. They need, and I hate to say this, they need a sugary snack. I'll never say this, but they need a sugary snack. Okay, at the break, they need sugar. Because brain that's the first thing your brain it uses glucose and that's what it wants to use so you just spent all this time you know using that brain so let them have some sugar if they want a candy bar it's fine let them have a candy bar just don't let them forget anything they have to eat something between while they're having a break let them step out clear their head whatever eat something and then go back in their calculator is also important what they have please make sure they know how to use the calculator they can Five steps they can skip through if they have the right calculator. Some calculators are not, and it's on the ACT website, what calculators are acceptable and what are not. But do not let them buy a brand new calculator that has all these whiz-bang things and they get in there like, two plus two. Yeah, exactly. They well, need to what's know. the difference between, do they need to be taking the written one? The written test or the computer test. It depends on, so you can take either or after this year on well it asks you right now it says the act with writing hmm. oh, okay. no no that's the writing that's the, uh, i thought that was that's the right story i made the mistake of doing that yeah. for my kids yeah. do, not, really do not no do not it is not <laughs> that's what i it's thought an extra hour. To do that. yeah okay no they don't want to no. it doesn't count for anything yeah. i don't even know why i don't well, well, right. the english department's like there this. might be but yeah. The only thing I ever promoted as an English teacher about it was when the day comes and it is mandatory for you to do it, you'll, you know, you'll have a yeah, but, now, but then it's if we're talking S, if we're talking SATs, that's a whole different story. ACT no. Don't involve. 